بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الأمين وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين قال المؤلف رحمه الله الأمر الثاني أي الذي يستقيم القلب به الأمر الثاني الذي يستقيم به القلب قال تعظيم الأمر والنهي We pray to Allah سبحانه وتعالى All the prayers is due to Allah and we send salat and salam upon his messenger and his household and his followers ila yawm al qiyamah after the day of judgment to proceed the author ibn al qayyim he says under the chapter the steadfastness of the heart and the limbs he said the second thing or the second matter or the second principle with which the heart attains steadfastness, firmness, is ta'adhimul amri wa nahi, is to glorify and exalt and magnify the commands and the prohibitions. And he said, this is a product of Exalting, glorifying the commands and the prohibitions are products of glorifying and exalting the one who commands and the one who prohibits, the one who commands and the one who prohibits, forbids, and that is Allah. Glorifying the commandments and the prohibitions is a product of, of glorifying Allah. It is because the servant glorifies Allah, that is why he glorifies the commandments of Allah by engaging within it, and he or she glorifies the prohibitions of Allah by refraining from it. And then Ibn al-Qayyim he said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى ذَمَّ مَنْ لَا يُعَظِّمُهُ He said, Verily, Allah has criticized the one who does not uh, glorify him and exalt him. وَلَا يُعَظِّمُ أَمْرَهُ وَنَحْيَهُ And the one who doesn't Glorify the commands of Allah in His prohibitions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Malakum la tarjuna lillahi wa qara. Malakum la tarjuna lillahi wa qara. In Surah Nuh, ayah number 13. Allah says, What is the matter with you? What is wrong with you? that you do not render to Allah glory. All who fi tafsiriha, the scholars of exegesis mention commenting on this verse. They said, مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَخَافُونَ لِلَّهِ عَظَمَةً What is wrong with you that you do not fear Allah in exhortation, magnification, and glorification. What is wrong with you that you do not fear Allah due to exhortation of Him? <clears throat> Imam Ibn al Qayyim he said, وَمَا أَحْسَنُ مَا قَالَ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ and how beautiful 
is the statement of Sheikh Al Islam, meaning his statement is beautiful. The statement he mentioned in regards to, in regards to glorifying the commands and the prohibitions. And the Sheikh Al Islam referred to here is Sheikh Al Islam Abu Ismail Al Harawi, the author of Manazilu. He said, beautiful indeed is the saying of Shaykh al Islam al Harawi in regards to glorifying the commands and the prohibitions. What did Shaykh al Islam al Harawi say? He said, glorifying the commands and the prohibitions, huwa, that is, Allah yu'araba bi tarkhisin jafin. وَلَا يُعَرَّبَ لِتَشْدِيدٍ غَالٍ وَلَا يُحْمَلَ عَلَى عِلَّةٍ تُوهِنُ الْإِنْقِيَادِ This is what Shaykh al-Islam Abu Ismail al-Harawi said in regards to glorifying the commands and the prohibitions. He said, one, it is that you do not, that you don't ignore it, that you don't ignore the command and the prohibition Due to a concession, due to a concession, and then you ignore it until you slip out of it completely. You ignore it to the point that you become negligent, extremely negligent. And Ibn al-Qayyim, he's going to mention an example of that later. Uh, in the following pages, maybe after two or three pages, he's going to mention an example of that. So I'll just mention the example he mentioned here to complete the benefit. And he said an example of that, he said an, ex an example of that is like the person who delays Salat al dhuhr due to Extreme heat. You know it comes in the hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا اشْتَدَّ الْبَاءِ إِذَا اشْتَدَّ الْحَرُّ فَأَبْرِدُوا الصَّلَاةِ فَإِنَّ شِدَّةَ الْحَرِّ مِنْ فَيْهِ جَهَنَّمِ He said, when the heat intensifies, then delay the salat, referring to salat al-dhuhr, because... The extreme heat is from the exhalation of the hellfire. The hellfire is from the breathing of the hellfire, the exhalation of the hellfire. So this person he takes this concession and he delays Salat al-Dhuhr until close to the exiting of the time for Salat of Salat al-Dhuhr or until he exits the time, the time frame for Salat al-Dhuhr then this person has engaged in the concession that has taken him out of the obligation of fulfilling, that has taken him out of fulfilling the obligation at its proper time. So a person who do a person who does this has not glorified, has not given glorification to the command of Allah. And not giving glorification to the command of Allah is you not giving glorify that entails that you don't glorify the commander who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, number one is that you don't engage, you don't ignore it, you don't ignore the command or the prohibition due to a concession to the point that you become completely negligent. Number two, you don't engage, you don't engage the command or the prohibition with extremism that takes you out of normal. You don't engage in the commands or you refrain from the prohibitions extremely to the point that you become 
that you, to the point that you go overboard. وَلَا يُعَرْوَ ضَالِ تَشْدِيدٍ غَالٍ You don't engage with it with an extremism that takes you overboard. So the first one is that you don't be negligent. The second one is that you don't be extreme. And the third point Abu Ismail al-Harawi mentioned in regards to glorifying the commands and the prohibitions, he said, وَلَا يُحْمَلَ عَلَى عِلَّةٍ تُوهِنُ الْإِنْقِيَادِ And the second point, the extremism, Ibn al-Qayyim is going to mention an example of that later, that those who go to extreme in doing wudu, those who have whispers, waswasa, in wudu, they're going to do the wudu, and shaitan is going to whisper to them, and then they're going to keep repeating the wudu. And he said the third point in regards to glorifying the comments and the prohibitions, he said that you don't introduce cheap reasons to weaken compliance. وَلَا يُحْمَلَ عَلَىٰ إِلَّةٍ You don't try to find an excuse, a cheap excuse, تُوهِنُ الْإِنْقِيَاد A cheap excuse that will uh, weaken the compliance to the command or the prohibition. Like for example, the saying of some of the heretics from the Sufis, the extreme Sufis, they say, we have reached Yaqeen. This is the Ghulatu Sufiya. They will say, we have reached the level of Yaqeen, therefore, worship is not bending on us. Worship is not obligatory on us. <clears throat> and they will say that doing so otherwise, meaning engaging in worshiping Allah after reaching Yaqeen, certainty, according to them, is contradicting the, the ayah, uh, the ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Allah says, worship your Lord until certainty reaches you. Now the certainty, the way they explain this is that when you reach a level that you're certain in your heart, then you don't have to worship Allah. And this is due to the Dalala misguidance because indeed the yaqeen that has been referred to here is al maut death. Allah says, Hatta atahu al yaqeen until certainty reaches him. Hmm? Regarding to those who don't fulfill the salah, I'm trying to bring the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bima kasabat rahina. إلا أصحاب اليمين. Every soul for that which it has earned is going to be encapsulated. It's going to be held accountable. كل نفس بما كسبت رهينة. It's going to be a collateral. It's going to be held accountable for that which he or she has earned. Illa ashab al yamin, except for the people of the right side, may Allah make us from amongst them. Fi jannatin yatasa alun, they will be in paradise asking one another, Anil mujrimin about the criminals. Ma salakakum fi saqar, they will ask them, Why? What has led you to saqar, to the hellfire, to the depth of the hellfire? And those who are in the hellfire in Saqqar, they will respond saying, Qalu, they will say, Lam naku min al We were not from those who used to pray, do the salat. 
And we did not use to feed the poor. And we used to engage in vain activities and foolishness with those who engage in vain activities and foolishness. And we used to belie the day of recompense until until certainty reach us. Now what is the certainty here? This is how the people of the Sunnah refuted the extreme Sufis. So the people, the scholars of the Sunnah, they said, you said this is certainty. Allah said, worship your Lord until certainty reach you. How do you explain this certainty here? So you mean, uh, these people, they were blind the last day, the day of compensation, until the certainty reached them in the heart? What has been referred to here? And, فَبُهِتَ غُلَاتُ Sufiya. The غُلَاتُ Sufi, the extreme Sufis became defeated. Because indeed, حَتَّى تَانَ الْيَقِينَ Until certainty reach us here, is the certainty of death. So the certainty in that ayah, وَعَبُدُ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى Worship your Lord until certainty comes to you is the certainty of death. Naam. So you have the extreme Sufis, they will say, being that we have reached that level, we don't need to engage in ibadah. This is finding a reason to weaken the compliance, rather to, in this situation of the extreme Sufis, to exit from fulfilling the commandments altogether, not even to weaken the compliance. Naam. To exit from the command and the prohibitions altogether due to this cheap and fake and weak reasons of theirs. Naam. So this is what Abu Ismail al-Harawi has said in regards to uh, glorifying the commands and the prohibitions you don't uh, become extremely negligent. You don't ignore it to the point that you become extremely negligent. You don't engage in it with an extremism that takes you overboard. And you don't find a reason invalid reason to weaken compliance to the commandments and the prohibitions. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim Rahimahullah he says وَمَعَنَا كَلَامِهِ The meaning of the statement of Shaykh al-Islam al-Harawi Abu Ismail al-Harawi is that the first level, the first station of glorifying Al-Haqqa Al-Haqqa is a name from the beautiful names of the most merciful Azza wa Jalla Allah Al-Haqqa is from the names of Allah that is because Allah he is the truth. And so that you can know Allah is the plain truth. So Ibn al-Qayyim he said the meaning of the statement of Abu Ismail al-Harawi is that the first station of uh, glorifying Allah is to glorify his commands and his prohibitions. And he said, وَذَلِكَ And that is because لِأَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنَ The believer, the true believer, يَعْرِفُ رَبَّهُ He knows his Lord بِرِسَالَتِهِ Through the message, uh, the revelation that his Lord sent down أَلَّتِي أُرْسِلَ أَلَّتِي أَرْسَلَ بِهَا رَسُولَهُ The message, the revelation that he sent the revelation that he revealed to his messenger 
Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he sent him with this message ila nasi kafa to the people all of them no one excluded the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is from his khasa'is from his unique qualities he mentioned in the hadith in the sahihain and it is also in Umdat al-Ahkam. He mentioned that أُعْطِيتُ uh, خَمْسًا لَمْ يُعْطَهُنَّ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ قَبْلِ I've been given five qualities that none of the prophets before me were given. And then he mentioned from these five qualities that the prophets before him were sent to their, to their people specifically and then he said, وَبُعِثْتُ إِلَى النَّاسِ عَامَّ I have been sent to the people in general. It comes in the ayah, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا O oh, people, the messenger said, O oh, people, Allah said to him to say, O oh, people, I have been sent to you, I am the messenger of Allah to you, all of you. So Ibn al-Qayyim is saying that that is because the true believer knows his Lord with the message with which Allah has sent his messenger Muhammad to the people, all of them. And then he said, وَمُقْتَبَاهَا That which the message that Allah sent with Muhammad requires and necessitates is al inqiyad Compliance, total compliance, complete obedience. The amrihi to the commands of Allah, to His commands, wa nahiyhi and His prohibitions. And then He said, wa inna ma yakun udalik, and that can only be, that can only take place, that can only happen if you glorify Allah. بِتَعَظِيمِ That can only happen You can only comply To the commands of Allah And His prohibitions If you glorify The commands of Allah And you follow it So He said وَإِنَّمَا يَكُونُ ذَلِكَ And that can only happen And remember in the past we said إِنَّمَا أَدَاتُ هَصْرٍ وَقَصْرٍ It's a restrictive term Meaning, meaning the only way that the servant is going to be compliant to the commands of Allah and his prohibitions is if the servant glorifies Amrullah, the commands of Allah, and follows it. And the servant glorifies the prohibitions of Allah and Refrains from it and stay away from it. فَيَكُونُ تَعْظِيمُ الْمُؤْمِنُ لِأَمْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَنَحْيِهِ دَالًا عَلَى تَعْظِيمِهِ لِصَاحِبِ الْأَمْرِ وَالنَّهِي So if the believer do this, then his glorification of the commands of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah becomes an indication, an evidence that the believer glorifies Allah. That the believer truly has glorification for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within his heart. And in his limbs and in his actions. And he said, وَيَكُونُ بِحَسَبِ هَذَا التَّعْظِيمِ And then the believer will become based on this glorification of Allah and glorification of the injunctions of Allah and His prohibitions. With this, the believer becomes من الْأَبْرَارِ From the righteous, the pious people. Those righteous people Al-Mashhudu Lahum, those righteous people that testimony has been bore for them. 
it has been testified for them that they are believers. Al Mashhudu lahum, those who testimony has been made from Bil Iman that they are believers. What tasdeed, the testimony of truthfulness has been witnessed for them. Wasihatil Aqida and the testimony of sound creed has been witnessed for them by Allah. وَالْبَرَاءَةُ مِنَ النِّفَاقِ الْأَكْبَرُ And they have been testified for by the Creator to be free from major hypocrisy. All of this has been testified for on their behalf. Iman, truthfulness, sound aqidah, and freedom from major hypocrisy. And how does the servant attain this? The servant attains this when the servant glorifies Allah by glorifying the commandments of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah. So from the signs of the glorification of Allah is to glorify his injunctions by doing them and to glorify his prohibitions by abstaining from them. And then Imam Ibn al-Qayyim Rahimahullah he mentions in the next paragraph the reasons for which some people engage in doing good deeds and the reasons for which some people abstain from the sins and the prohibitions he says rahimahullah fa inna ar-rajula verily the individual qad yata'ata fi'l al-amr may engage in doing the commandments, the injunctions, why? For the sake of Allah? No. Due to glorification of Allah? No. Because people are watching him. Because people are looking at him so that he is not criticized by the people, he do it. A person might engage in doing the commandments because of the look of the people. وَطَلَبِ manzilati And seeking status, status, وَالْجَاهِ And position in them with the people. You want to be respected by the people. You want to attain status with the people. You want the people to give you position. So you do it. You do the commandments. Because of that. وَيَتَّقِي الْمَنَاهِ And a person might abstain from the prohibitions. Why? Due to fear of Allah? No. Ibn al-Qayyim said no. He said خَشِيَةَ سُقُوطِهِ مِنْ أَعْيُنِهِمْ A person might refrain from sinning for fear of falling. For fear that he will fall in the eyes of the people. If the people catches him, sorry, if the people catch him, if he is caught by the people committing that sin, he is going to drop in the eyes of the people. He is going to lose respect. The people are not going to have respect for him anymore if he was a person who was respected prior to that. So a person might abstain from the prohibitions خَشْيَةَ سُقُوطِهِ مِنْ أَعَيُنِ النَّاسِ For fear that he will fall in the eyes of the people. He will lose respect. وَخَشْيَةَ الْعُقُوبَاتِ الدُّنْيَوِيَّةِ And for fear of the worldly punishment مِنَ الْهُدُودِ From the capital punishment. الَّتِي رَتَّبَهَا الشَّارِعُ those capital punishment that the Shari'u has attached al al manahi to the prohibitions has a retribution. And the Shari'u here 
is the shari can be used to refer to Allah and it can be used to refer to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Man faqad Allah. whosoever obeys the messenger has indeed obeyed Allah Allah said wa in tahtadu if you obey him meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then you will find guidance and there is nothing upon the messenger except to convey clearly the message to the people. So coming back to Ibn al-Qayyim, he said that a person might refrain from sinning for fear that he will fall in the eyes of the people due to fear of falling in the eyes of the people and for fear that he will be punished, the worldly punishment like the hudud. That the shari, the legislator, has attached to the prohibitions, the crimes, has a retribution. So if the individual does this, If a person do this, then his action and his abstinence his acting according to the commandments and his apt, his abstin his abstinence from the prohibitions is not due to did not emerge from glorifying the command and the prohibition did not emerge from the glorification of the commands and the prohibitions So this person has not done the commandments and refrained from the prohibitions due to his glorification of the commands and the prohibitions. And definitely not due to him glorifying Allah. Al-Amir nahi the one who is the commander, the one who commands and the one who prohibits. <clears throat> A person who do a person who does the commandments because the people are looking at him or because he wants to attain status with the people, he wants to attain respect, he wants to win the hearts of the people. A person who abstains from the prohibitions because he doesn't want to fall in the eyes of the people. A person who refrains from the prohibition because of the capital punishment. This person, even if he do the commandments or refrain from the prohibitions, this is not due to glorifying the commands and the prohibitions and definitely not due to glorifying the commander and the prohibitor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> and then Ibn al-Qayyim says, So, here he's going to mention some of the signs of glorifying the commands. He says, فَعَلَامَةُ التَّعَظِيمُ فَعَلَامَةُ التَّعَظِيمُ لِلْأَوَامِرِ So the signs that indicate glorification of the commandments are He says, رِعَايَةُ أَوْقَاتِهَا Giving clear to its proper time. وَالْمُسَارَعَةُ إِلَيْهَا عِنْدَ وُجُوبِهَا And to hasten toward uh, doing it To hasten toward doing it عِنْدَ وُجُوبِهَا When it becomes When it becomes obligatory He said, Ri'ayatu awqatiha. Sorry, I skipped some of them. He said, So the signs that indicate the glorification of the commands is Ri'ayatu 
او قاتها giving care to its proper time وحدودها and its limit والتفتيش على أركانها and observing its pillars وواجباتها and its obligations وكمالها and its completion and perfection والهرس and to strive على تحسينها to perfect the action في أوقاتها within its designated time within its designated time والمسارعة and to compete إليها toward fulfilling it in the وجوبها when the deed becomes obligatory والهزن from the signs of the glorification of the commands is to be sad والكآبه and to grieve والأسف and to be sorry so sadness, grief and sorrow عند فوات حق من حقوقها when you miss one of the rights from its rights when you miss one right from its right To feel sad, to feel sorry for yourself, and to grieve, rather to weep over yourself for missing a right from the rights of the obligation, of that obligation. And then he mentioned an example here, he said, كَمَنْ يَحْزُنُ Like a person who becomes sad على فَوَاتِ الْجَمَعَةِ For missing the congregation of prayer. And I say here, commenting here, the only person who becomes sad from missing the jama'ah is a person who has iman in their heart. The only time that the servant becomes sad from missing jama'ah, the congregation of prayer, is when the iman is intact. Otherwise, some people, they don't care. Some people, rather, they will look for a second jama'ah. There are people who don't care about the jama'ah. As long as they come and get one person to pray by them, they're okay. So this is when the Iman is there, it's intact. A person who has Iman within him and he's working on it, when he misses the Jama'ah, if he's a man, and of course we're talking about the men because the Jama'ah is obligatory on the men, Salatul Jama'ah, not the women. When he misses the Jama'ah, uh, he becomes sad within him. Rather, you heard from the Salaf. Some of them used to hide when they would miss Salatul Jama'ah so that the people don't see them out of shame and shyness from missing the congregation. But nowadays, some of us, we miss Jama'ah intentionally and then we don't even have that grief and sadness within our heart. So the one referred to here is the person who has Iman intact. So he becomes sad from missing the Jama'ah. وَيَعَلَمُ إِنْ هِنَ أَنَّهُ لَوْ تُقُبِّلَتْ مِنْهُ صَلَاتُهُ مُنْفَرِدًا That if his salat was to be accepted from him, if he do salat by himself, even if his salat was to be accepted from him, فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ فَاتَهُ سَبْعَ وَعِشْرُونَ ضِعْفًا Then he, indeed, he has missed the double multiple of 27 times. He has missed 27 times multiple. And that is because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Salatul Jama'ah tafdulu salat al fadhi bi sabi'in wa ishirina daraja. He said, Salatul Jama'ah, the prayer in the congregation, with the congregation, supersedes the prayer, pray alone by the individual. By himself 27 times. So this person becomes sad from missing the jama'ah. And he knows that even if his salat by himself were to be accepted from him. Then he has missed a lot. He has missed out 27 times multiple. And then Ibn Al-Qayyim, he went on to mention uh, another example to clarify this. 
He said, وَلَوْ أَنَّ رَجُلًا If a person were to وَلَوْ أَنَّ رَجُلًا If a person, a man يُعَانِي الْبَيْءَ وَالشِّرَاءَ If a man who struggles and suffers and work hard in trading, buying and selling يَفُوتُهُ فِي صَفَقَةٍ وَاهِدَةٍ If this man or this business person if he were to miss in one transaction في بلده in his land من غير سفر that requires no traveling for him he doesn't have to travel to do that transaction ولا مشقة there is no difficulty no burden the transaction within, is within his land in his hometown if the person were to miss that transaction that were to bring for him 27 dinar gold coins of profit he would have bite his hands and he would have eaten his hands raw out of regret and sorrow why because he has missed this deal He's a person who goes out, he struggles going out, buying and selling to make profit. And now this transaction, he misses it. For example, let's say a person comes to his home. A person who knows, this is an example that I'm setting. You're a business person. You go out, for example, selling tops and things like that, finding customers to buy from you. And you leave your house and a person comes after you looking for you. To do a transaction with you, a transaction that will bring you 27 gold coins of profit, and then the person didn't meet you, and then you you you, you comes back home, and somebody inform you your family tells you oh this person came when you when you left and he wanted to buy the top from you with this amount, and the profit is 27 gold coins. You will say, where is he? And then your family is going to say he left already. You're going to be so sad that you missed that transaction that came to your house. The person came to your house looking for you. And then the next day, for example, when you meet the person, he says, oh, you came to my house the other time wanting to buy this and this. I still have it. The person is going to say, I'm sorry. I already buy it from another person. You will feel very sad and you will regret losing that, that transaction. This is just an example to elaborate on the point of Imam Ibn al-Qayyim. He said, this person, if he missed this transaction that would have brought him 27 dinar gold coins of profit, he would eat his hands in regret and sorrow. So he said, فَكَيْفَ Then what do you think? وَكُلُّ ضُعْفِ مِمَّا تَضَعْفَ بِهِ صَلَاةُ الْجَمَاءَ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ وَأَلْفِ وَأَلْفٍ what do you think then about the Salatul Jama'ah? Every multiple from the multiples of the Salatul Jama'ah that the Salatul Jama'ah is multiplied with is better than this transaction thousand, thousand, thousand times, a billion times. Every double or every multiple that is acquired from the Salatul Jama'ah is better than this 27 dinar. And it can be multiplied for you based on your intention up to whatever Allah wills. Wa ma sha Allah ta'ala. Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah he said, Fa idha fawwata al abdu alayhi hadha al ribh. If the servant, when the servant misses out and neglects this prophet, khasira. He loses completely. If he misses this profit, he loses completely. Meaning, if he misses out on Salatul Jama'ah, he loses out completely. 
You have many from the people of knowledge that says if the person misses Salatul Jama'a, there is no Salat for that person. Even if he prays by himself. Ibn al Qayyim says, And then the person becomes cold hearted because of missing the Salat. فارغ من هذه من هذه المصيبة لكن due to this affliction ها إمام ابن القيم is saying that missing صلاة الجماعة is a affliction غير مرتاع لها not at ease and he said فهذا من عدم تعظيم أمر الله this is because of this person not glorifying the commands of Allah Meaning Allah is going to afflict this person with sadness, depression, and other afflictions. He said this is due to not glorifying the commands of Allah fi qalbihi in his heart. He said, وَكَذَلِكَ likewise, إِذَا فَاتَهُ أَوَّلُ الْوَقْتِ If the person misses the first time, the first hour of the salat, الذي هو رضوان الله which is the pleasure of Allah سبحانه وتعالى fulfilling the salat in its beginning time is more pleasing to Allah it comes in the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud in the Sahihain uh, that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أحب uh, that uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he asked the Prophet يا رسول الله أَيُّ عَمَلٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ Which deed is more beloved to Allah? قَالَ الصَّلَاةُ عَلَى وَقْتِهَا He said it is to pray on time. قَالَ ثُمَّ أَيِّ He said then what? قَالَ بِرْهُ الْوَالِدَيْنِ To be righteous and honorable to your parents. May Allah help us with that. And then he said ثُمَّ أَيِّ Then what? He said قَالَ الْجِهَادِ Striving in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, more, the most beloved of actions to Allah is to pray on time. So he said, وَكَذَلِكَ إِذَا فَاتَهُ أَوَّلُ الْوَقْتِ أَلَّذِي هُوَ رِضُوَانُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Likewise, if the person misses out on the first hour of the salat, the time of the prayer, which is the pleasure of Allah, then the person has missed a lot. Then the person has missed a lot. The person has missed the pleasure of Allah. Allah being pleased with the person. Our father who suffered our or if the person miss the first row, ya jama'a, how many brothers? Now I'm talking about the brothers because the first row, standing on the first row, is for the men. Because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Khayru sufuf al-rijal, asafu al-awwal." The best row for the men is the first row, and the best part of the first row. Is the right side. Now in the masajid, some masajid, you see brothers coming, not giving care to the first sub, the first row. Whereas the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَوْ يَعْلَمُ النَّاسُ مَا فِي النِّدَاءِ وَالصَّفِّ الْأَوَّلِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَجِدُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَسْتَهِمُوا عَلَيْهِ لَاسْتَهَمُوا If the people knew the blessing and the reward that is within the adhan, and standing in the, on the first row, and they had nothing else to do besides to draw a lottery, they would have drawn the lottery to call the adhan and to stand in the first row. Many, due to ignorance or due to negligence, are neglecting this virtue of standing on the first sofa, the first row. So Imam Ibn al-Qayyim is أو فاته الصف الأول الذي يصلي الله وملائكته على ميامينه The first row on the right side those on the right side Allah and his angels send salat upon them Don't you want to be from those that Allah and his malaika send salat upon and the salat of Allah is ثناء عليك praising you في الملأ الأعلى in the highest assembly in the Salat of the, of the Malaika, that's the Salat of Allah, in the Salat of the Malaika, the angels, is istighfar laka, seeking forgiveness for you. Ibn al-Qayyim said, 
Our father was so full awal, or he misses the first row, the right side, then this person has missed a lot. Then this loss is even worse than losing 27 gold coins. Losing out on the first soft, standing on the right side, it's worse than losing your business. Naam. But many people don't know. He said, وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُ الْعَبْدُ فَضِيلَتَهُ لَجَالَدْ عَلَيْهِ If the servant knew the virtue or the virtues of standing in the first row, he would have fought, combat others to stand in the first row. وَلَكَانَتْ أُرْعَى And a lottery, a lot would have been drawn to stand on the first row. A lot would have been drawn and those that their names come out in the Lord, they would stand on the first row. The people would have fought for the first row if they knew the virtue for standing on the first row. Likewise, losing out on the large congregation, the large congregation with which the salat is multiplied, the reward for the salat is multiplied based on its size, based on its size, how big it is or how small it is. The larger, the more people there are in the salat, the more the congregants, the more the reward. So he said, the more the, the congregation, the more people are in the salat, the more the attendees, the more the attendees, the more beloved it is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the larger jama'ah has more virtue than the jama'ah that is small. And then he said, Whenever the distance is further away from the masjid, the further you are away from the masjid, the more the reward. Why? Because one step is going to drop a sin away from you. One step drops a sin and the other step raises a rank. One step drops a sin away from your sins. And the other step raises you in the rank until you reach to the masjid. So the further you are away from the masjid, the more the reward. And this is the end of this chapter. Uh, the steadfastness of the heart and the limbs. So for a person to be upon istiqama, just to recap and to summarize this chapter, for you to be a mustaqim, Allah says, Inna al-ladhina qalu, Rabbuna Allah, thumma staqamu. Verily, those who say, Our Lord is Allah, and then they remain firm, tatanazzalu alayhimu al-mala'ika, the mala'ika are going to descend to them, saying, Allah takhafu, do not fear, wa la tahzanu, and do not grieve. Don't grieve for what you have left behind, and don't fear for the future, and have the good news of the Jannah that you were promised. So al istiqama those who said, it is as uh, Imam Ibn Rajab al-Hambali said in his explanation of the Hadith of Shaddad in the Risala. When the people are collecting gold and silver, collect these statements, Allah asks you firmness, for firmness in the matters of the religion. He said, Allah, Those who say our Lord is Allah many, but those who are firm, they are few. So to be a mustaqim, your limbs has to be mustaqim, firm and steadfast in obedience to Allah. For your limbs to be steadfast in obedience to Allah, your heart has to be steadfast in obedience to Allah. So it comes from the heart. And for your heart to be steadfast in obedience to Allah is based on two principles two things the first one is to prioritize the love of Allah that which Allah loves over everything else that is loved by you or that is loved by your parents or that is loved by your teachers the love of Allah takes precedence over everything 
for your heart to be steadfast. First. Second, for your heart to be steadfast is that you have to give, you have to magnify and give respect and glorification and magnification to the commands and the prohibitions. And that is a product of glorifying Allah. Who is the commander and the prohibitor? So these are the two principles upon which the firmness of the heart, the steadfastness of the heart is built. Giving precedence to the love of Allah over everything, glorifying the commands and the prohibition, which is a product of glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because indeed a person who doesn't glorify the, Allah, doesn't glorify the commands of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us understanding in the deen. Allahumma inna nas'aluka thabata fil amr wal azimah ala rushduh. Wa nas'aluka mujibati rahmatika wa azaimi maghfiratika. Wa nas'aluka shukra ni'matika wa husna ibadatika. Wa nas'aluka qalban saliman wa lisanan sadiqa. Wa nas'aluka min khayri ma ta'alam. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma ta'alam. Wa nas'taghfiruka lima ta'alam innaka anta allamu al-ghuyub. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين